Okay. So guys, let's start. Let's start. We have a very, a very packed program for us today. Thank you again for coming to the monthly Mojo. And I'll start sharing with you a little bit about us. Um, I'm from Delivering Delight. And my name is Avi Liran, if you don't know me. And we have a model that we work with companies how to become a delightful workplace that people come to work, they enjoy, they create delightful customer experience. And that brings you the bottom line that you need in this competitive world. So we have just uh, one of the things that is very popular now that we are working with is the delight challenge because we don't want just to give keynotes and talks. We want people to change behavior and get results. So what we do is we create the event and then we create a group. We work together with a weekly challenge and then afterwards we gather again and talk about what worked or didn't work or should work. So today we are having a great guest who is happened to be my partner in crime. And he is the, the lead researcher and the one that did the heavy lifting behind this book that will come and will be launched soon. And Daniel will, you better watch the screen to know when it's going to be launched. Uh, a little bit about uh, Daniel, uh, you can see some of the pictures uh, the, he met the Singaporean quota. He has uh, three kids and uh, you could see on the right low side, you could see that he also has a passion for real estate to refurbish, to make something better and then accelerate the value of it. That's one of his passion. Uh, you can see on the right hand side him and his uh, better half and on the left side you can see him when he was uh, handling a budget of uh, was it five four million dollars for five thousand people or uh, five million dollars for four thousand people I, I keep missing them five five or four <laughs> okay and you can see a small picture of us working uh, together so um, when we started the journey, what you could see on the right hand side, we had a window full with ideas and suggestion. And as you can see, the model have evolved seven times through 220 interviews. And over here, Daniel and myself were at the office of the CEO of uh, DBS Bank. Uh, remarkable work, much of the credit again to uh, Daniel, who is our star today, 220 leaders, 37 countries, and 50% uh, ladies, not less than that. It's a good question to ask and a question, a question and answers. How did we get to that number? So just a little bit about Mojo before we're going to jump to Daniel. Uh, we find out during uh, COVID, I froze, we froze, uh, 2020 found us uh, unprepared digitally and we found that many people have anxiety, they had burnout, they felt loneliness, they felt sad, they were um, not really connecting with each other, they had uh, Zoom fatigue and they were feeling depleted and we decided to come up with something that will be different, we called it Mojo, we thought about let's bring the mojo for everyone for for ourselves and for them but what would mojo stand because we had moments of joy but what is the o and then stephanie came with moments of joyous optimism and um, so this is lenny my partner who is also on the call here and later on this year is going to do a big piece for us that to make us aware and laugh at the same time and we started the first mojo together and this is some of the sampling of the mojo last month. We had an amazing lady, Seher. I see her here and I send her a big hug to her uh, with again, condolences for your father. Amazing lady, she inspired all of us. And we have in the room also Team Hammonds who created an amazing series with me uh, about visual listening. So thank you. 
uh, team. We have quite veterans over here. And we have Mariana Pascal, who is not only the one of the only of the audience journey. I used her to help me with my keynotes and she gave us um, the tales of your tribe to tell stories of your of your tribe and we also started when we started we were civil minded we tried to help communities and we worked out uh, raising funds for feeding people in manila and contributing to a big drive to get sixty thousand dollars for uh, psychological help for people and you know now it's a uh, very big and module is one of the free things that you could do to converse with people all over the world. So how does it work if, you, if you're first time to Mojo? Let me go through very fast. We're gonna make an orientation, which I just did. Uh, then we're gonna have a theme story. Daniel will tell us his story. Afterwards, we're gonna break out into rooms and share our stories, because our stories are so inspiring. And by the way, if you're not showing your camera, that is exactly when only the people with camera on will be able to stay because everyone that does not have camera will automatically be out because we don't want people to have no one to talk to. And just apology if you feel that it's not okay, but we really want real people and real conversations. Then Daniel will share with us a learning and we're gonna break out into rooms again. Then we're gonna have questions and answers and takeaways. That's gonna be basically it. So without further ado, let me pass you to Daniel. All right, everyone, how are you today? So I noticed that there are still a lot of Sarahs. There's like uh, uh, Sarah 1, Sarah 2, Sarah 3. So just make it an effort to change or to update your name so that at least we know who we are. And when you're having that conversation during the breakout uh, discussion, at least the other person knows your name rather than just calling you Sarah. So. Just one final thing to get the best view, uh, make sure you change your view to the speaker view rather than, you know, rather than the gallery view, select the speaker view. In this way, you get, you, you get me, you get everyone on top and you also get to see the slides that I'm going to be walking through all of us here today. So let's get started. So that's me, uh, that's Abi, and I know some of my readers are here today and for, for those of you who don't have a copy of the book, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to be talking about chapter one, which is called the BMW that you drive. You can actually get a free copy of that chapter on my website, firsttimeleadership.com slash forward slash resources. So the whole idea of this chapter, it's really about my story yeah so i i start off my an entire book and since I, I wrote the book what's the what better way than to actually start with me right and here i am on the very left of these four guys here this photo was taken back in the year 2000 and on the very left that's me so to give all use a bit of a background as to what this photo is is about so in in late 1999 to around early 2004, I was in the Singapore Police Force. So for those of you who are not uh, Singaporeans or who may not be very familiar with, with Singapore, here in Singapore, we have conscription. So once you're uh, at the age of 18 years old, or when you have finished your studies at around 20, you are uh, and you are an able-bodied male, you are conscripted into the armed forces. In my case, I decided that I would sign up for five years with the Singapore Police Force. Now, to set the context, I was a very young man back then. You know, I was twenty. I was almost twenty when I when I went in, and I was a little bit past twenty-four when I left. And even though I voluntarily signed up with the police force, uh, it wasn't. You know, I, I was. It was really against my will, in the sense that we we had to serve. We 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 were we were all going to be conscripted anyway. And so what I did was that I went in with an attitude that I was going to just blame the system. You know, you, you want to call it the man, you want to call it the system, the government, whatever it is, right? So rather than take responsibility for the fact that I'm going to be spending five years with the police force and let's do something about it, and let's do something positive about it, I just went in there with this blame and attitude, you know. Um, every day, pretty much in my time, 
at work. It was just, you know, I don't really want to be here, but I have to be here because if not, then I'm going to get put in put into jail. So you can imagine that that as a police officer, even though I, I was I was wearing the uniform, that was a kind of attitude, mental attitude that, that I that I'm walking with. And naturally, if I'm just going around blaming everything. You know, I will just use any opportunity that I that I could to just mourn and complain about my lot in life. And eventually this whole idea of just whinging and mourning just got to, to this point whereby it became systematic. I remember one time, this is probably three or four years into my police service, and my team leader put me aside and he and he told me this. He said, Daniel, you know actually very few people in the team likes you. You know, they don't really want to go out with you because you're so negative. But because you're one of the more senior guys here, I have no choice. I have to put you out on the on the road with with someone. So could you try to be nice? And you know, so you could imagine if you have to work with colleagues who are like that, who are perpetually negative, or perpetually mourning and groaning about, uh, you know, how how work is terrible, how life is life is terrible. It doesn't really make for a very pleasant work environment. Eventually, my time in the police force would end, and I just saw it as freedom. You know, I went off to Australia. I, I studied. I had a really really good time over there, and then eventually I came back. Uh, the one thing with with the, with the with conscription here in Singapore is you have to serve as a reservist meaning once you leave active service you have to come back and serve as a reserve as a reservist for two weeks for a certain number of years and that's what I did uh, the difference is that when I when I came back uh, I was a much older person when I went in to serve my my, my reservists I was easily 35 or, or 36 so a good 10 years had passed since I left active service and I had by then unconsciously absorbed the lessons of what it took to be a leader. Although at the time I couldn't articulate it, so if you were to ask me, you know, uh, what is leadership? Can you explain leadership to me? I couldn't explain it to you, but I knew that as long as I did my job and as long as I was responsible for for my work, and you know, people generally around me were pleased and were happy to work with me. That was my definition of of leadership. And I didn't realize that the Im impact of of having you know like this leader's mindset would have. Uh, it was until when I received this letter of commendation from the from the police force. So what had, had happened was that usually when a lot of reservists go back to to the police force, you know, a lot of them have to leave their day jobs and a lot of them have to leave their everyday lives to, to go back in. And for a lot of people, serving as a reservist is a real chore. You know, you don't you, you don't want to do it, but you have to do it or else or else they catch you and they put you into jail. And so I thought that if I was gonna go in there, I must have just make make the best of it. You know, it's just a change of attitude. And I got this commendation because the, the police inspector who was in charge of, of, of all of us, uh, with servicemen, he said to me one day, you know guys, I've never had such a trouble-free, smooth batch of reservicemen before. Usually all, a lot of you reservicemen always give me some, some kind of problems, but in this particular case, there was no, no problem whatsoever. And, uh, and a few of my colleagues who I was working with, they they sort of turned to me and, and, and they said, "Hey, look, you know, you know, good thing you you were here because you you were the one handling most of the uh, handling most of the things and made it so easy for us to work." And that's the whole difference between someone who is a minion, you know, who's just there, who don't really want to be there, who's negative. They have this attitude of blame, moan, and whinge, as compared to someone who is a leader, right? Whose real job is to you know benefit others, make others great and win together and so what i want to ask you you know having listened to my story is this what is your leader bmw what's a moment in your leadership maybe it's not your leadership or maybe it's someone else's leadership 
do you recall a moment of when what someone said, what someone did, you know what uh, the the words of someone did, the the actions or their decisions made them come across as a leader to you, and that's my question. <clears throat> Back to you, Abby. Can you hear me, everyone? Yep. All right, great. So now it's a time that is more important than our stories. You heard the story how Daniel was kind of in the wrong BMW that crashed, blame, moan, and winch, and he needed to move to the other kind of uh, BM BMW. If you have been in your life in that mode of uh, someone that is a victim and move to become a leader, that will be a nice story to share. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into rooms. If you're not familiar with Zoom rooms, don't worry, everything is automatically. We're going to beam you to, into a room with the two other people and you're going to share the, the question is maybe what was your uh, BMW or another leader and we're going to see you. It's going to be three minutes each. We're going to sh uh, share uh, with the two other people. So it's going to be a group of three. And now can I ask everyone to put their camera on? Because if you can't put the camera on, the system will take you out. So how was the sharing for you guys? Uh, show me with your fingers. Was it uh, good, bad, so-so? Great. So, all right. Seems like majority of you uh, felt good. That, that's great. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do what we usually do. We're gonna have sharing because your stories are matters more and your stories are more inspiring than others. And that's why we went to 220 leaders to listen to their stories. And that's where the treasure is, is within you guys. So if you wish to share the story that you heard, not your story, but the story of your friend that was with you in the room, type your name down and I will call you to share the story from your room, one of the stories from your room. Oh, ladies first, first come, first go. So Mariana, you have 90 seconds to share um, let me just uh, get you there. Please share with us. Turn, turn your mic on. There we go. No, I just wanted to share because both of my partners, they told quite different stories, but the same outcome. One of them had a great boss and the boss gave him some advice about the way he was leading, how to, you know, what he was doing that wasn't so great. The other one had somebody that upset her, but regardless of that, both of them made the decision that they were going to uh, change themselves. So it just highlighted to me that whether you're, whether you're dealing with a leader that you respect or that, that does something good for you or somebody that you don't like, uh, you can always decide what can I learn from it and how am I going to improve myself and they both did that so wasn't that, that that's absolutely fantastic sharing I remember I had a toxic boss and I wanted to quit but I learned from him what I should never do to anyone that I'm gonna leave so yeah um, who else um, uh, Jason Jason let me just uh, try to, to find you. Jason, Jason, Jason. All right, here you go. Thank you so much, Mr. Avi. So I was in the room with Miss Yelena and Miss Anna. And I guess the whole, the two most important words that came out from our discussion was change of perspectives and transitioning back. So let's go to Miss Yelena's story. What she taught me was that we should have a different perspective with what happened or occurred in our lives. So Miss Yelena, she has seen perestroika happening. She has seen the Berlin Wall fall. And 
from her eyes at that point of time, she would see it as a sort of uh, negativity. That was until she met a woman who, who had glistening eyes. She saw in those historical events the beauty in it. She saw the progress. So that was when her eyes opened up into a new and broader perspective. And Miss Anna and I shared a similar story wherein we were having a privileged life. She had an opportunity to go to Singapore. I had an opportunity to grow up in Abu Dhabi where everything was somewhat easy. And we shifted back to our home countries and we saw the reality of life. And that was when we woke up and we had to accept and make do with what really is happening around us. We, we tend to see things that, or we tend to accept things that we see around us. And as for myself, I'm 22, I have not seen much of life. So I see things through either my parents' point of view or what my friends talk about. But when I came here in India, I'm currently in India. That's when I really see how things are. Fantastic. And you are going all around to look for new wisdom as they come in. Thank you very much, uh, Jason, for sharing. And the last sharing, we have someone that I know very well. Uh, do you know this gentleman, Lenny? Go ahead. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kevin, Jason, Mariana, Martin. I, I sat with uh, two people, one um, Sarah from China and Tahir from uh, Bombay. And both stories were very diverse and very interesting. Uh, Sarah told me about the fact that she had teams that were so diverse when it comes to uh, education, age, culture, and she has to relate to all of them on their level, which takes a tremendous amount of sensitivity and, and um, excellent communication to try to be on each person's level and speak their love language. And um, she also told me that she had to be tough. And I said, what do you mean by tough? She said she's being constantly um, tested there's always somebody in the group that's testing her to see how far they can push uh, if she falls over or she stands her place and that, that that was a very interesting thing tahir told me that he took over his father's business his father started the business in bombay bombay in 1969 and how things have flowered and flourished since then and he has a, a group of people that has have been working there for years and they're like a family he treats them as a family and is interested in them and contacts them even when he goes traveling he's in touch with them personally and professionally and it was a very very nice a uh, very nice conversation so you so you had sharing in china and india two superpowers i'm 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 amazed okay i i i i'm sitting in tel aviv i'm talking to this guy in bombay i'm talking to this woman in china and I come from a generation that we didn't even have television when I was a kid, okay? Well, this is blowing my mind. I mean, you people don't know what a miracle this is. You're sitting here live, talking to people all over the world. I am very touched. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the sharing, Lenny. Uh, Thank you. Great Thank to you have you. <laughs> I, I, I'm almost as ancient, I, I needed to uh, sneak to the neighbors to see Apollo landing on the moon because we didn't have television at that time. So the next thing I'll call upon um, Daniel again and just want to share with you that Daniel has a double degree in uh, Master in HR and he also uh, was uh, in few financial institutions so he came not only as a, a, just a writer, but he had the management operation uh, experience. So now, Daniel, we're all yours. Okay, well, welcome back and thank you very much for uh, you know, to those who shared earlier. So, you know, I want to ask all of you a question, which is this. How would you describe leadership? Because now in this part, you know, we, we talked earlier on about you know, uh, 
your leadership experience, like like, like a moment in your leadership experience, or or someone else's. And if you were to ask someone how would they describe leadership, you will realize that it's going to be a very different, uh, you know, definition from what you have. And in fact, in this screen that I'm sharing right now, that. All I did was I asked five people how they would describe leadership, and I get had this whole array of different descriptions. So I'm actually going to ask Avi right now, which is to actually start up this whole Mentimeter thing. I invite all of you to actually take out your mobile phone or go into Mentimeter, punch in that code, and put down what your definition of leadership is. You can choose to put down one word. You can choose to put down a short phrase, or you can put down an, an entire sentence if you want. What's your definition? That's the most important thing, not someone else's. This is your definition. So if you go here and take a picture of that, or go to menti.com and write the number three nine seven nine six nine zero four, that should work, and we should see um, if you if you want to take. Uh, with your camera, with the QR code, I'm just going to move to the side and it's going to get you right into there. Everybody is good? Yeah. It uh, says the code cannot be found. A code cannot be found. Yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. The QR code works. I just tried the QR code. Okay, you try the QR code. I know what happened. And my mistake, the cure, if you put the number, it's 21309766. Uh, Let me try to um, add something. So that's 21309766? No, that also not, cannot be found. No, this works, this works. The QR code is working, however, yeah. the voting system is closed. So when I'm trying to submit the words, it says voting is closed. Yeah, voting, voting is closed. Yeah, in my case, that's what. Okay, so this is something that should... Oh, no, it's there. Not... I've got it. I've got it. It's working now. Should, that should not happen. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is amazing. This is, this is live. Whoa. Okay, so I tell you what we're gonna do. Um, just to let me see if I got all things done. Um, let's go back to to Daniel, and Daniel will take us from the technical glitch. We have to uh, make sure that uh, at least we got his results. Okay, so. You know, technical glitches happen all the time, so we don't. So let's not stress about it. But you see, the whole idea behind this is that if I was to ask all of you to give your definition of leadership, what we are going to get is we're going to get a lot of different, you know, opinions here, right? And you're going to find that rarely uh, is your definition going to be the same as someone else's. And that's because your lived experiences are different. You know, your your backgrounds is very different. The, the leaders that you have interacted as well uh, are different. And so that it results in that your definition of what you think a leader is or what you think on how you should lead is also going to be different. So I will just ask that everybody put their microphones on mic with, on, on mute because I can hear quite a bit of background. I think someone is sniffing. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So really, why do we have all these different definitions, right? It's all about perspectives. And take these three images that you see here, right? On, imagine if all of you went into this forest and this forest is called leadership. One of you is going to look up and you're going to think, oh, right, that's leadership. Someone is going to stand on the road and look straight ahead and you're going to have a very different view and, and you're going to say no that's leadership and then someone's going to stand at the side of the road and look in the opposite direction and they're going to say no 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 that, that's not right 
that's leadership. You see, uh, I read over 30 leadership books in order to try to understand leadership before I even started doing this research. And I was terribly confused because everybody kept saying different things. You know, every single expert would say something different. And I started to ask myself, wait, are they all right? Maybe I need to have a, a different perspective, you know, one that takes a very high overview of the entire force that's called leadership. Because what I realized was that in speaking with leaders from all around the world and in collating all of their, their ideas and their wisdom, it gave me this opportunity to then realize that, hey, look, actually, when someone says something about leadership or when many when a few people are saying different things about leadership, they're not wrong. Everyone's correct. The whole idea is how do you take all of their ideas, all of their definitions and put it together. And that's what the fourth image on the right, you know, of the guy sitting on this high ledge, looking down on the forest. That's the unique perspective that uh, that first time leadership brings. Because ultimately, leadership is a combination of traits, right? So when someone says leadership is about respect or it's about responsibility or it's about being kind or compassion or self-awareness, it's, it's, it's all correct. It's all these things put together. So, you know, that's, so this is my definition of leadership. In order for me to make sense of what leadership is, you know, for me, leadership is about bringing others to their success. But you see, my definition isn't necessarily appropriate for someone else. You might agree with this definition, but you are going to have your own. Because early on, we, we talked about this whole idea of minion BMW or leader BMW, you know, how does a leader benefit others, make others great or, you know, or allow us to win together. And this whole idea of your definition of what leadership is, is your North Star. It's going to help you when you are faced with, uh, you know, moments when you need to lead, you're going to have to ask yourself, wait, so how, how, am I, how am I going to lead? And one of the things that is going to guide you is how you define leadership. And as a result you know, of the whole idea that leadership is a combination of traits, we were able to actually just put it all together in, in, into this model. You being self-aware, or you being aware of what your leadership definition is or your definition of, of leadership, what that is, that's at the core. Because every single thing else, how you are going to be an authentic leader, how, how are you going to develop and care for the, for the people around you, how are you going to contribute to them, how are you going to collaborate with them, communicate with, with them, you know, uh, with the team, with the organization, with the, with the world around you. It really stems from how you yourself define leadership. And so a really important question that I want to ask all of you here is, what is your definition of leadership? And Abi, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, so by the way, as you see, we managed to save uh, the Mentimeter as Daniel was speaking. So if you go to menti.com and you put this code, you could still enter in. But now it's going to make sense more to go into the groups and talk about your definition of leadership and share with each other your definition of uh, the leader that you are, the leader that you want to be, the leader that you, you want to have, uh, what is the right uh, definition? And we're going to break you into rooms, uh, rooms of three. Hopefully you're going to enjoy again and then come back and, and share with that and try. I, I look at it as an exercise in awareness. Back everybody. Uh, you could see, you could see that we have some answers from your answers. You have make uh, others future leader, be known in industry, setting example, respect others, wisdom, empathy, resilience, collaborate. And I think from here, we're just going to need to uh, ask you about your your own experiences in the in the room would you would anyone want to share a story that they heard in the room
the font is slightly fuzzy. Oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, sorry about that. We're gonna send you the, the results later on. Hi, Avi. It wasn't this font. It was the one that came with the paintbrush before that. This is fine. Okay. Good. Okay. Anyone, anyone want to, to share? Yeah, so uh, does anyone want to share what is their definition of leadership to them? I'm happy to share mine, if that's okay. Um, sure. So this is Seher. Hi, everyone. Um, so for me, I was just in a room with Cheng and Lenny. And for me, you know, I, I think of the metaphor of a, a mountain that you're standing in front of with your team when I think about leadership. And it looks scary and daunting and you know it could be mount everest it could be k2 but you need to climb that mountain and you need to tell that team why we need to climb that mountain and what lies on the other side so that's the why why we're here together then you, you need to inspire them to think beyond their physical limits and mental limits and emotional limits how we're going to achieve this together because we're stronger together not individually and then as a leader just leading people along the way and making them believe in themselves and and inspiring them uh, with little acts of kindness and feedback and, and being empathetic being that leader that cares not just drives action but cares because uh, that's who people stick with so for me it's a leader that can inspire you to climb a mountain you never thought you would climb and get on the other side and have a story to tell that's my May I add just one, one more thing before I hand to Daniel? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Seher. Uh, I believe that you need to get them there safely. Absolutely, safely. Yeah. So, um, any, any other person want to share uh, a story? Yeah, if I, if I, if I may. Uh, I yeah. can, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, First of all, I completely share with Daniel that uh, a, a leader you should uh, should aim to make others successful. Then this should not only be the case as a leader; this should be the case in your entire life. If you if you help others to be successful in anything in what what uh, what you do, what they do, you will also uh, be successful in your life. What what you want to achieve. But then I also ask myself, um, you know, when you all see the uh, the, the, the points of, uh, you know, being respectful and supporting, caring, all this kind of stuff, how can you tell somebody and how can you transmit somebody to be caring uh, or to, to, uh, to be supportive and to be respectful to others if he doesn't feel that? And then I said, you need to talk about what is your, what is the mindset behind all this to become a good leader, the mindset you need to have. And, and then I came to the point that it's, you need to love people. If you don't love people, then you can't be caring, you can't be supportive, you, you can't be uh, in the mindset of others before self and, and stuff like that. But then you should also ask the question, how can you make people loving other people? You need to change perspective of how people look at the world. And you need to tell, you need to transmit to them that we are all connected, that we are all sisters and brothers, that we are all a big family. So when you when you make them, uh, when you bring that to them, that to, that they believe that that we are all a big family who care for each other, then you set the scene of creating great leaders. That's uh, that's very true, very profound, and uh, there are leaders that lead for themselves, and there are leaders that leads for others. And the, the difference is actually what we do in the, in the work of Delivering Delight. We, we see a big difference between the ones that really love others and really practice that. But I think, why don't we hear from Daniel to wrap up and then before we're going to go to questions and answers. Thank you, Achim. It was a very nice share, very inspiring. All right, so thank you very much for for sharing that see the whole idea of having your own definition is really to make yourself be aware of how you want to be a leader because when i was trying to understand leadership in my own way it's very common to look at someone else and go hey look i, I like the way he or she leads i'm going to try to copy that or i'm going to copy 
this other person. But you find that when you try to copy other people, it doesn't really stick. You know, the way they approach doesn't really stick. So having your own definition of leadership is really useful because leadership is seen in the words, actions, and decisions, right? When you come across a situation and you're not sure what words are you going to use, you know, think back to what's your what's your definition. So in my case, if my definition is about bringing others to, to success, then my words, actions, and decisions need to be aligned with, with that. You know, it needs to be helping to bring helping to bring people to their success either through my words or there's certain actions that I can take to help them to be successful. Uh, there's certain decisions that I can make so that all of us can can win together. So, you know, there are a lot of leadership concepts. But the reality is that we don't go around every single day at work thinking about those, those, those concepts. You know, you probably just have enough space for one thing in your head when it comes to, to leadership. And, and that's why for me, what I found is that in speaking with all these leaders from around the world, I always ask myself, okay, you know, this leader from this organization has shared with, with me this. How does that apply to me? How does that apply to how I see leadership? And the whole idea, you know, is that remember that the model for us is that self-awareness, your awareness is at the heart of your leadership. So the more you know about yourself, the more you know about how leadership works, it gives you more choices. And that's a quote from Lenny. I want to end off really with, with just this, this quote of mine, which is this, leadership is simple, but not easy, complex, but not complicated. Leadership actually is simple. You know, once you break down, like what I, I, I've done in my book, once you break down leadership into its individual parts, you realize, oh, okay, you can actually learn every single individual part that makes up leadership. But it's not easy because every single situation that you walk into where you have to exercise your leadership is unique. You're going to have to use a different combination of, of, of traits, uh, you know, a different, a different way each time to successfully resolve that situation. And that's where the complexity is, because it's not just, uh, you know, having a conversation with a team member or having a conversation with a, with a colleague and just saying that, all right, if I'm self-aware, that's enough. It's not enough. It's not just self-awareness. Self-awareness is just one thing. Maybe you, you need to be a really good listener. Maybe you, you need to be able to enable the, the, the other person. You know, it's using a different combination each time you're having a conversation, each time you're having to make, uh, take an action or make a decision, different combination of traits are being used in order for you to successfully resolve that situation. So it's complex because you have to use multiple traits, but it's not complicated to the point where you can't understand it. You can, right? It's just that in most cases, for pretty much all the leaders that I've I've spoken to, it's a life leadership is a lifelong learning journey, and that's just it. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. And uh, this is a good time if you have any uh, question for Daniel. So I just want to add that uh, just for all you today, uh, if you're interested to get a copy of, of 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 the book, you can go on to my website firsttimeleadership.com. And just type in the code Mojo, and that takes five dollars off of the book. Just for all of you, because all of you are, are here today. So let's take some questions. Any question? You can just. Lenny has a question. Let me just get Lenny in. Just type your name and I'm going to call you out. I, I, type, I type my name. I know. Oh, That's why I call you out. Uh, Daniel. Hey, Lenny. Uh, thank you very much for your inspiring talk. Very in, informed. I'm going to tell you that I enjoyed it very much. However, I disagree on one point, if I may share. Yeah, go ahead. 
You mentioned awareness. And I have a sentence for you. That's my sentence and you don't have to take it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just know that I said it. Awareness is not the important thing. It's the only thing. Being self-aware is the center of all relationships. Being a leader is being in a relationship and you have to be a relationship expert. You have to know how to feel people, see people, understand people, get to their level of, of communication and finding out where they are and meet them where they are. We have an old adage in education that goes something like this. Meet them where they are and then take them to the unknown. And in my opinion, this is only my opinion, and I love what you said, everything you said, but in my opinion, awareness is not the important thing. It's the only thing. You begin from there, all your relationships, whatever it might be, and leadership is part of a relationship. Avi and I have a saying, death is easy. Relationships are hard. And on that note, thank you, Lenny. Uh, I see a lot of people smile and nodding their head. And now I'm just going to, uh, Mariana, uh, uh, raise her name. So over here, over here to Mariana. Thank you, Avi. Well, this might sort of piggyback on what Lenny has said, but what came out in one of our chat rooms was um, that I, I noticed that when I've been in leadership positions, I kind of end up being more of a manager than a leader. So I'm wondering, is this a common uh, problem? And what is, how does one avoid that? Could you uh, rephrase the question? Uh, what, what, what's the problem? Awareness? No, I think she's talking about uh, the difference between management and leadership. Correct. That it's, I'm wondering, is it, is it common, Daniel, that people fall into being managers when they're in a leadership position? And how does one avoid that? Uh, okay, so thanks, Maria. So uh, I think so earlier on, I just want to thank Lenny as well. I, you know, what you shared was 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 spot on. You know, leadership is at the heart of sorry, awareness is at the heart of a lot of things. And yeah, so to you, Mariana, manage being a manager and being a leader is interlinked. You can't s separate that, right? You got to be able to manage outcomes and be and manage your team so that they can deliver results. It's how you manage them that the difference. So that's something that uh, there's this whole idea that if you want to be a manager, what you're trying to do is you is your focus is on is, is on control, and you're trying to control the resources that you have. You're trying to control the situation that you have so that you can achieve outcomes. However, we have to work with people and people don't really like to be controlled, but people are, are pretty open to being influenced. And so you've got to be a leader in order to influence people. And there's no clear-cut distinction between, you know, at, at this point you're a manager, and at this point you're a leader. It always intersects. So yes, there are moments where you will have to manage and there are moments when you will have to lead. If I may add uh, one more thing about that, that the nature of the word lead means that you're going to have people that follow you. And when you manage, you can also manage just yourself. And I think the tr uh, transition is that you, you make it in such a way that you are worthy of they really following you, not forced to be managed after you. Uh, but I, the, the, it, it's a as all debate as the chicken and the egg, people will find ways from here to there. But everybody uh, that we know talks about leading rather than managing. Maybe managing is um, more micro. What, what does the wisdom of the room says? 
What do you have? Uh, I know that Sahara leading a hell of a lot of people. Uh, what is that for you? Metal said something um, that is very profound. Let me just uh, get Metal. Metal, would you share that? Where are you, Metal? Here you are. Hi, Abby, Daniel. Thank you so much for this session. Yeah, so this is just something that, uh, you know, um, I was thinking that, you know, based on my previous experience um, working with people, I realized that to, to meet others you don't necessarily need to have the you know to be on the hierarchical level it is more on what you say and what you do uh, in order to achieve things so I think manager is usually by title but to be a leader everyone can be if they want to thank you thank you very much well just 60 seconds Kevin said that he wants to, to share something. So just 60 seconds before we wrap up. Ah, 60 seconds, okay. Okay, so uh, with the people that I work with, a lot of them in the European Union, many of them, are, well, most of them are managers and they come to me as a manager and they're constantly in fire mode, right? Is to, what do I do for this, uh, you know, to solve these problems? How do I deal with all these people? Who, but the problem is, is that none of them are necessarily leading. And that's the challenge, and that's the problem, is, is that they, I find that this leadership is something that they need to be empowered to do, allowed to do, is because when they're hired as a manager, they get into the role of what is a manager, the functions, and instead of allowing that empowerment to lead, because some organizations will hold back the focus of leadership, to the only the hierarchy and so consequently it needs to trickle down to all and be horizontal and vertical that's thank it you. thank you very much kevin and what i'd like to share with you that if you uh you have the code if you want to get the book it will be launched within a month or more uh we're finalizing the date very soon uh, you could take a picture of that or you can just go to First Time Leadership. There is one website that's called First Time Leadership in the World, firsttimeleadership.com. And next time we're going to see a kick-ass lady. Uh, this is one of the famous uh, people in our community of speakers. Her name is Ashley and Ashley actually uh, it has an agency of um, social media, one of the most lucrative social media agencies in China. And what we think that we can promote ourselves in that big market without knowledge of the market, you kind of do it. And she has no misery story or bad story of rising up. She just decided one day she's going to kick ass and she's going to become a superpower and she's going to be dominating. And she's an absolutely amazing lady that takes some of the best multinational companies to great success. And on this note, on time, I want to thank everybody for coming in. And thank you, Daniel, for sharing the last 75 minutes with us. If you all want to show hands uh, of support to Daniel uh, and uh, wonderful work, work for three years, and thank you everyone for coming in and I hope to see you next month.